All right, what we're going to look at here, here's my PIC K8048 de PIC development board again. In this video, we're going to look at internal pull-up resistors in a PIC or other microcontroller, which is what these switches are attached to. So when I press a switch, you'll see that I can turn an LED on and off. And if you look at the board, I have with the switches there are no pull-up resistors. Here is the schematic of the circuit we will be referring to. It's a PIC 16F628. As far as down here on this half of the circuit, if it was a PIC 16F84A, they both work identical. I have um, four LEDs connected to RB0 through RB3, and then four push-button switches from PB4, well, RB4 as they call it, through RB7. I usually call it PB7. Nonetheless, you notice there's no external pull-up resistors. We're going to activate those internal to the chip. Then we're going to set up show you how to set up the interrupt so you can be over here blinking an LED like you saw in the video but I push a switch to switch on on and off another LED without the without the program running the original blinking routine having to sit here and it's called polling checking the switches constantly you get out of doing that it makes your programming a lot more simple this is just partial code that I'm showing you. The full code can be downloaded from my website. This is the setup routine. If you've done Arduino programming, you know what setup is. All right, let's walk through these uh, commands. First of all, I'm going to switch over to bank 1 because that's where the option register is located. In this case, I'm going to um, bit clear file um, in the option register the corresponding bit that will turn on my port B pull-ups. I think that is bit 7. Then I'm going to configure port B where my switches and LEDs are connected with uh, 3 through 7 as input and PB0 through 3 as output. Then I'm going to return to bank 1. I'm going to clear the port B register. I want to clear everything out, 0, all 8 bits. Now, to activate a pull-up, this is similar to what you do in Arduino. Remember, you program a um, digital pin as an input, and then you write a 1 to it. Same thing here. So, in, uh, a bit set file, port B, switch 1. If you go back, that I define switch 1 as PB3. And same thing with uh, switch 2. So this is what you do. You, act, you um, clear in the option register the port B pull-up enable bit. You set the four pins that you're using, PB4 through 7, as inputs. Then you'll write a 1 to the corresponding pin that you want to activate the pull-up on. Now you set the interrupt. And of course, this is the inter, uh, global interrupt enable. This is in the interrupt control register. You set bit 7. Uh, you set bit 3, which enables the port B pull-up resistor interrupt. And this is interrupt on change. And then you want to uh, bit clear file. You want to clear the RB interrupt flag, which is bit zero. If you, if the bit is set, that's how you tell that an interrupt has occurred. You can check um, if you're not using if you're not using, for instance, interrupts, and you're having maybe you have three devices that are interrupt enabled, and you don't know which one. You'll check these bits like bit zero in the, interrupt, in the interrupt control register. Once you do your routine, you have to clear, you have to set that bit to zero, or else the interrupts won't work.
Now we go to the main program loop. All right, right in here is your main program. If you're doing Arduino, this would be loop. All you're doing is turning on an LED, waiting 500 milliseconds, turning off the LED, waiting 500 milliseconds. You notice that in all of this, I'm not checking the pins that my switches are connected to. That gets me out of having to pull the switches to see if somebody has pressed them, which would make the code here a big mess. In fact, you would miss most of the switch closures because most of the time of loop is spent in the delay of 500 milliseconds. All right, this is a cut down version of my actual interrupt service routine. When you first, and it's going to be org 0x04, that's your interrupt vector location. This is explained in my original video on pick interrupts. Nonetheless, I save my status and W registers, and the code is simply this that you saw when I pushed the button. No matter what button I pushed, be it one or two, it comes here. All it did was use an XOR function to toggle the state of the LED or LED1 that you saw in the video. What it's going to do now is it's going to wait for me to. Uh, get my finger off the button, which is how I managed to stop it, the stop LED4 from blinking. Why am I doing this? Understand, this is interrupt on change. If I push the switch, I get an interrupt. If I release the switch, I get an interrupt. If I don't get my finger off that switch, if I don't get my finger off that switch fast enough, it's going to fly through here. It's going to set, it's going to reactivate and clear my interrupt flag. And it's going to interrupt again and come right back and toggle it back to where it was. So when you press, when you be aware that when you do this, this is interrupt on change. There's an interrupt when you push the switch, interrupt when you release the switch. This simply waits for me to release whatever switch we've got. I'm going to delay 100 milliseconds. I'm going to clear my interrupt uh, enable flag. And then it's going to return from interrupt and go back to our little blinking LED 3 or 4 or whatever it was. That's all there is to it. So to summarize again, to set up the port B pull-up resistor interrupts, one, set the uh, corresponding pin to be an input, set the corresponding bit in port B to a one, and then here is your interrupt service routine. Make sure, excuse me, make sure that you uh, enter, um, set your global interrupt enable that you in your interrupt control register that you activate the uh, bit to turn it on and then you have to make sure that the uh, interrupt flag is cleared and so that's a brief look at how to turn on interrupts and pull up resistors all in one bunch Again, go back. There's a. This is part of a five-part series looking at this. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Thanks for listening.